my last video, I went over some tools for making a basic low poly model. Having that information prepared us for a box method of model making using extrude and subdivision. In this tutorial, I'm using a set of custom key commands. You can find a link to it in the description below. This is a big subject and there's a lot to cover, so I divided it into two parts. Box modeling is done by starting with a simple shape and building it up to make a larger shape while subdividing it to get a high definition model. Typically, we use extrude to construct the shape, but generally it's about taking a low poly model and converting it into a high definition model. This technique can be used to make organic models such as figures and or hard surface models such as mechanical parts. Before we talk about box modeling, we need to talk about subdivision. We saw in the previous videos that we can smooth an object using smooth shading. This is a lighting trick used to smooth the appearance of a shape and if we want to control the appearance, we can construct extra geometry to smooth out the corners. At the top here of the properties palette, you see a button for smoothing. With the object selected, I can quickly apply a level of subdivision. This physically takes the existing geometry and divides it dynamically. And when I press a number, it divides, and each number is a higher amount of division. Just below, you can see the amount of vertices, lines, and polygons. As I go to a higher level of division, you can see these numbers are getting larger. If these numbers get too high, we run the risk of crashing, and Hexagon will warn you about this. Looking at our sphere here, we can see it appears quite smooth, uh, even in flat shaded. And that's great, but it's at the expense of having high poly counts. If I turn on smooth shading again, we can see a very smooth sphere. If I reduce the amount of divisions, it's still very smooth, but the amount of polygons have greatly reduced too. This creates a perfect balance between geometry and smooth shading. And we can use this to our advantage by strategically adding geometry to create details that are infused and smoothed along with the overall shape. Subdivision smoothing is dynamic, but I can solidify it by pressing this little lightning bolt icon, making the divided geometry editable. You can see subdivision creates a perfect mesh made up of quads every time. No matter if my original mesh had n-guns or triangles, it mathematically generates an all-quad mesh. This makes it perfect for making high-quality, high-definition models. Putting this into practice, I can create a simple cube and press C to subdivide it. Press C again to increase the division level. I can press V to decrease it. I can press here to see the control cage. And as I extrude, I can build branching parts of the shape. The cage controls how the shape appears. I can hide the cage so you can see it better. And I can continue to branch out parts by selecting surfaces and extruding this way. I can divide and slide edges to make sharper creases, like this. And this is known as control loops, or it's also called support loops. I can remove the smoothing by clicking this little remove button in the dynamic geometry palette. And without smoothing, this is the actual geometry. And you can see the control loops are very close. And that's okay, because our objective is to use smoothing to get the geometry like this. You can see the shorter the distance between two lines, the tighter the geometry is. And that's what creates the crease and smooth edges. There are two types of loops. One that flows around the corners, like this. And one that flows along the sides. Or a better way to see that is with this. The edge loops wrap around each side, making these perfect quad corners. So when you subdivide it, it holds these corners, smoothing them, catching the light beautifully. 
Now there's a lot that can go wrong when making edge loops, and I'll go over that in the next video. But it's all about good topology and edge flow and starting with good geometry in the first place. And obviously, because of the high poly count, you shouldn't use high subdivision levels if you are building a model for a game or if the object is only rendered from a distance. For instance, you wouldn't build an oil tanker or a house in high definition, at least not every part. The scale of the object plays a big factor in whether or not you should use subdivision. Instead, there are manual ways for creating smoothing in targeted areas of a model using beveling and chamfering tools and other methods. Let's make a very simple box model, one of a chess piece, the rook. We'll start with a simple cube and extrude it, dividing it into multiple cubes to form our overall shape. When it comes to box modeling, you want to model in phases. The first phase is blocking out the general shape. Uh, the second is smoothing and further definition with edge loops. Then the last phase is working in smaller details within the shape. Okay, let's get started. Here I start with the basic cube like this. Select the surface and push it down. This will be the base of the piece. Then I press Z for fast extrude and we drag the handle to make an extrusion. All right. Press escape or you can press command shift A to unselect. I'll select it again. Another way to fast extrude is by holding the command key down and dragging the handle like this. And we can keep doing this until we have our basic shape. Another way to extrude is to use the sweep extrude. I press Shift Z for that. And with that, you see this type of interface, and in the properties, you see some options. And by pressing the spacebar, I can cycle through the different sweep types, like this. This is the one I want, and with that, I can start to draw the body of the chest piece, like this. And when I'm happy with that, I can press return to validate it. If I didn't like that, I could have pressed escape. But look here, uh, this type of extrusion is dynamic. And this is the dynamic palette. If I select the curve here, then I can select the individual points and fine tune the points like this. You want to make sure you're selecting the correct handle because it will allow you to push it out like this. I'll undo that. I can add a point by pressing Y, uh, then pressing return to accept that. I can then move that. For now, I'm happy with this shape, so I'll press this tiny lightning bolt icon. That will solidify the shape. That's also known as flattening or collapsing the geometry. It's no longer dynamic, but that's okay because we'll modify the shape using control loops. Now, let's make the very top of the piece using a cylinder. But first, I'll select this top surface of the base and press Shift K. That divides it and gives us a center point for placing the cylinder. Now, I'll press Alt 2 and hold Shift and place a cylinder here. And I'll make it with 18 sides. Then I'll click in the sections and use the scroll wheel or my trackpad to decrease the amount to two. Then press the close all holes button. Okay, I'll resize it a little. But look, uh, when I did that, it moved away from the other piece. No problem. I'll move it up and use the snap align tool to snap it back in place. I need a center point here, so I'll uh, select this surface and press Shift-K to cap it temporarily. 
Okay, back in object mode. I press Shift J to activate the snap align. I select the center point and then select this center point and that places it on the other piece precisely. If I switch to transparency you can see that. On the cylinder I want to make a sort of stepping shape. I'll select this top part and press Shift Z. So as I draw out my shape I'll use a combination of radial extrusion and axial extrusion like this uh, until I get the shape I want. And press accept. I'll select the curve and make some adjustments. Then collapse the dynamic geometry. Okay, uh, so let's loop the top and then press Shift A to make an inset division here. Then I'll select these surfaces, uh, leaving a gap uh, between each unit like this. And press Shift Z for extrude. Now, something here I want to point out before I confirm the shape. Before I click, I can choose this option here to extrude individual faces like this. And with that, you can make some interesting decorative parts on your object. Anyway, I want to extrude them as a unit, so I choose this. And I can hold the Command and Shift keys down to lock the extrusion in this direction. Now I can click to place and press return to accept and then collapse the DG. Now I could have used the simple fast extrude but I wanted to show these options. So now when I subdivide this it becomes well a bit of a blurry mess but let's see what a bit of control loops can do with this. First when I look at the shape from the top it subdivides like a cylinder but it started as a box and it doesn't look like a correct circle it looks like a, a Berksel, a half circle, half box. When working with subdivision and rounded shapes, you don't actually want to start with a too low of a poly shape. Otherwise, you end up with a blocky corners and distortion rather than a nice curve, especially when you start to add details along the curved surface. Now, normally, if you're aiming for a circle, you would start with a cylinder primitive. With a real project, I would just start over with a cylinder, but no worries. I'll, uh, let's just cut this up and turn it into a circle, at least one that's less like a Berksel. I ring select here and here, and then divide. And now, looking from the top, I'll scale it, and I'm just eyeing it. Uh, if I was looking for precision, I would create a spline circle and center it and snap these edges to the sides. Okay, to give the body more definition, I'll create some control loops and then shift them to create sharper edges. And now that's looking much better. Now let's tackle the top part, the crown. Now there is this new tool we could use to swiftly create a cut around the shape. Press Shift S. And now I can quickly make control loops along the base like this. And then press return to accept that. Let's press C to see that in subdivision. Okay, if we look at the bottom here, we have this wonky line that's made from the cap. If I isolate that, Command Shift I, we can see that we need a control loop here too. 
Think of it this way. Each sharp corner has two sides, so each side gets a control loop. I'll loop select. And here we use a slice around, but we'll use that with a different tool, one that has all the edge cutting controls in one tool. Press Shift E and you get this interface. This is the edge tool. The arrows indicate that you can slide the line towards either side and it will make a new line on that side. The blue handles here, that slices around on both sides of the edge. And the green handle, the fillet, that creates a bevel on that edge. More on that later. I'll use this often to make different types of cuts along the edges. For now, I just want to make a cut here. Now we'll make similar cuts on the bottoms of each grade. I'll ring select. Shift X to split. Then I'll loop select those. And press B to move these apart. This is the bevel tool, but since it's not on a corner, it simply moves the lines apart. So now we have a control loop on each side. And that should give us a nice sharp edge for each grade. Let's check, press C. And yeah, that's looking pretty good. Now for every top part, let's ring select, Alt-R, then Shift-X to split that, then loop select, Alt-E, then press B to bevel them apart. Now select this surface and press Alt-B to convert the faces to borders, okay? Then press Shift-E and pull the line toward the center. We'll also cap this. Press Shift K and we need that temporarily just to get our center point. Now let's see how this looks so far. Let's sharpen these up, selecting these faces and then go into transparency and control select from an angle like this. And press T again to come out of transparency, then press Alt B to convert the selection, then press Shift E to drag the lines to about here. Now let's see how that looks. I like this rounded, but if I didn't, I could add a control loop at the base of these. So I'll turn off subdivision and uh, select these and, and then ring them and then split and then loops select all right, and then I'll uh, slide this down. And now let's look at that. So now I want to add some detail to the sides here and also have it repeat around. So let's try that. We need to make a box and an area to add detail. So I'll I'll select these outer edges here and press shift E for edge tools and pull a box to about about here. Then I'll delete these lines and straight only. Then select these points and connect them to the bottom here pressing shift X. And now I select these surfaces and extrude. Then ring the outer edges and split to give it some sharpness. Okay, so let's have a look at that. This edge is bending too much, so I can fix that by redirecting the um, the flow line. And that's easy to do. I just split the uh, tops and edges and then uh, delete some lines.
Okay, so now these lines are flowing in a, in a better direction, so I'll, I won't get this strange bending on the corner. I can improve this shape by inserting a uh, inset edge here. And now I should have a flowing holding loop around this outer edge. So let's select these surfaces and grow the selection by pressing uh, the plus key. And then um, press Z to extrude and drag this red handle. And that pulls from all sides, keeping the surfaces planar. Uh, and that gives me the type of control loop I need around this detail. Let's have a look. Not bad. So now I want to repeat this detail around the rest of the crown. Now before you repeat a shape, take a pause and have a good long look at it. Uh, you don't want to repeat a shape with bad geometry. Here, looking from the top, now because I started with a low poly shape, I didn't have enough divisions to keep the roundness when I split the shape here. Um, you see, it's not quite round. A 36-sided cylinder uh, to start with would have been better. Oh well, uh, what I could do is select all of these lines here and here very carefully. and move it out like this. It looks okay, and this isn't a big deal since it's a curved surface, but when I look and check uh, to see if I have non-planar shapes, you see that I have all of these now are non-planar. Uh, in my next video, I'll explain more about this. It's not a big deal, and the model will still work, but it's, it's more important to watch for on surfaces that are meant to look flat. Okay, so let's copy this, and then hide it. I always keep a copy. And then paste and duplicate, getting this ready for repeat. We're going to repeat this section around a circle, so I delete this side. And uh, this side. And then grow the selection and delete the rest. I copy and paste this. And now I uh, right click and choose set pivot point from this menu and then rotate it and it needs to be exactly 60 degrees so I type that here. Okay and then I repeat this another time and and then select all three and choose command shift C to combine them. Now they are all one shape and since these were perfectly aligned I don't need to merge the vertices. Hexagon automatically uh, does that and when I smooth I can see that. Now all we need to do is rotate this around and hold shift to snap and then select both and combine. Okay, so the last thing we need to deal with are the caps. Look, when I freeze the DG it creates this ugly geometry here. So let's undo that and remove the DG 
and select all these surfaces and delete. Okay, so now I select these four edges and these four and bridge, shift B, and I can go all the way down the shape bridging this way. Then I finish it off with the field tool. Now I could connect these lines this way too using the free cut tool, pressing X. And this is sometimes called the knife tool, but uh, I'll go back and leave it this way. And I'll show you how to properly do that next time. Um, so let's look at the geometry. That's a little bit more acceptable. As you can see though, this is a pretty high resolution model. For an object at this scale, it would be better to model this without box modeling, uh, but this was simple enough to show the concept behind box modeling. Uh, so that's it for a part one. In the next video, we'll explore subdivision more and talk about topology and edge flow and manual methods for smoothing shapes and keeping poly count low. I hope you found this helpful and see you next time. Thank you for watching.